The NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation. Yes, it has some pretty things about it, but yes, it has a lot of ugly things about it. So I can tell you, I mean, these people in the NIR movement, they would go out and they would pray for people, pray for, for miracles to happen and, you know, prophesy over them and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's all about miracles and prophecy and, and all this kind of stuff. You know, they would, they would say, you know, this is what's bringing people to God. This is what's bringing people to the Lord. You know, we need to kind of entice them through miracles. We, we got to kind of, you know, just use this as a, as a means to win them over. But the question is, what are you winning them over to? You see, Jesus, when he first started out, the first thing he did was not miracle, miracles and signs and wonders and prophecy. He preached, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near you. He, you know, the people knew what sin was. And that's the first thing you got to do is teach them what sin actually is. You know, the, the disobedience to God's laws the transgression of the law. People knew that and, and they needed, and Jesus basically called them to repent. And he brought down some pretty heavy challenges, to say the least, or commandments that was even heavier than that which Moses brought down. And so this is, way, this is the way Jesus started. When he sent his disciples out, the first thing they did, it says, is they didn't go out and did miracles in, in prophecy. They went out and preached, repent. Okay? So, what you got to realize is, the most important thing is here, is repentance. That people change their lives. That people get right with God. You can have a lot of people out there that, uh, that would be, you know, uh, praying for people and, uh, you know, miracles happening and prophecies going on, all kinds of stuff like that, and they could still die and go to hell. And this is the problem with the NIR movement because a lot of people, are, they think that just because God is answering their prayers, or at least they, they believe He is, seemingly it is, I think that a lot of it is really just uh, nothing but, but hype and... and uh, and, uh, and pseudo uh, miracles, to be honest with you. But, you know, let's just say these miracles are, are true. These prophecies are real. It's right on all the time. Everything's, everything's right on. These people believe that they are right on with God because, you know, they hear from God. They flow with the Spirit, they call it. But a lot of times it's just a pride issue. It's just an issue of the heart where they're like, you know, uh, God, I'm so important. I'm so... I'm so, I'm so in tune with God, God Almighty, the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the greatest person in heaven and earth would come and speak directly to me and give me a word for you. See how spiritual I am? I would pray for you and you would get healed, see what power I have. A lot of it is just a pride issue, okay? But one thing that you must realize. One thing that you must always remember if you're involved in NAR. If you're involved in the NAR, you must always remember Jesus, His own words of warning. Warning, I say. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone who comes to me saying, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He says, many will come to me. See a, lot, see, a lot of people think that all you got to do is just come to Jesus and he'll just accept you and he'll never cast you out. Again, you know, we don't want to take one scripture and just cherry pick scriptures. Well, we'll take this passage and we'll take this passage, but we'll ignore this one. We'll ignore that one. That's what Satan did in the temptation. He just wanted to point out one passage to Jesus and kind of just ignore everything else or just ignore other verses and kind of try to say that this one passage abrogates another verse or, you know, uh, this one passage kind of nullifies or, or, or this one passage kind of replaces another passage. No, it doesn't. Everything is the Word of God and everything is forever settled in heaven. There's nothing temporary here. 
okay? So a lot of people think that all you got to do is just come to Jesus and he will never cast you out because they, they point this one verse out where Jesus said, I will never cast anybody out that comes to me. But they, 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 do, not, they do not think about or they do not, they, they do not acknowledge this verse that I'm just bringing to you right now. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23, that many will come to him. Many. When Jesus said many, it, he means many. Okay? He, he doesn't mean a lot. He means many. A lot. Multitudes. The actual word in the Greek there means multitudes of people will come to him in that day saying, Lord, Lord. Okay, they're confessing him as Lord. And there, there again, we've got a lot of Christians that believe that all you got to do is come to Jesus and confess him as Lord and you're good to go. Jesus said a lot of people, a lot, many multitudes, a great abundance of people will come to me and come, okay, and say, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not done many mighty miracles? Have we not done many mighty works in your name? And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I will turn to them and I will say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And they will go into everlasting fire. Okay, so this is a warning from Jesus to, especially to those people like the ones that are involved in the NAR. Yes, it's good to come to Jesus. Yes, it's good to call Him Lord. Yes, it's good to, to work and flow in the Spirit. But the most important thing is, is that you are not a worker of iniquity. You don't smoke. You don't drink. You don't use filthy language. You do not break the commandments of God. The word iniquity in, in the original Greek is anomia. The, the negative, uh, negative prefix of nomia, no, uh, law, or Torah, as the, the Jews would, would, would say. It, you know, back in those days, if you were living in those days in that culture, in, in Greek, Instead of saying Torah, you would say nomia. Nomia means Torah. Those who are against the Torah. Those who do not live according to the Torah. Or more specifically, those who live like there is no law. And that describes a lot of so-called Christians today. So make sure you go by the commandments of God. Number one, okay? It doesn't matter how much you come to Him call him Lord, prophesy, do many money works, cast out devils, all kinds of things. It doesn't matter how many miracles you do. God can use a stone to create a miracle. He can use, he can use a, a stick, you know, to cast out a devil. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you're any better than the neighbor's dog, okay? You've got to live according to God's Word. You've got to live according to God's ways. You've got to follow His ways. You've got to follow His instructions and His guidelines that He gave you from, from Genesis to Revelation without missing a beat. And it's possible. It's not hard to do. So remember, first, first things first. Make sure you're right with God. Make sure you're not someone who lives in anomia without Torah, without the law, against the law. Make sure you're not like that. You don't want to be cast out in outer darkness for eternity.